This is episode 296 of the Beyond the Food Show, and we are back with a Q&A podcast. And the question today is, can you accept your body and still want to change it? I'll help you answer this question for you and you only. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist and creator of the Going Beyond the Food Method. And after a 25-year dieting career that started at the age of 12, I decided to say hell no to diet culture and undiet my life. It is now my mission to help women undiet their life. If you're new to our podcast, be sure to grab our free podcast roadmap at stephaniedoze.com forward slash roadmap. Ready, sisters? Let's do this. Hello, sisters. Welcome back. It was Thanksgiving here in Canada last weekend, and I had my whole family come over to my place for a Thanksgiving dinner, and I reflected on how better my relationship with my family is today compared to what it had been most of my adult life. And I wanted to share that with you today. Because from coaching and interacting with many of you, I know this is a situation or an experience that many of you were consume with the thoughts that our family have about us, right? Or the thoughts they may be thinking about our body or what we ate or what we're eating while they're present with us and constantly feeling a veil of judgment. And not just during the event, but the anxiety prior to the event of thinking of all the judgment we quote, think we're going to feel during the event and after the event. I know for me, that used to be my situation for many, many years. And then thought work, self coaching has allowed me to change this. And what I realize, and I think this is going to hit a lot of you, I realized that I was projecting my own self judgment of myself onto them. I expected other people, in this case, my family, to judge me, or at least have judging thoughts about me the same way I was judging myself consistently. And today, the freedom of being who I am in my body, in my choices with my family is such a pleasant experience because I no longer do this projection because I no longer consistently judge myself. So I can enjoy, like last weekend, family gathering for what they are, instead of being stuck in my mind before, during and after. And I wanted to share that with you because one of the concepts that we teach our students is celebrate your victories. It's actually an entire lesson, a 10 minute video inside of the confidence track celebrating your wins and programming your mind to see your wins and see them easily, right? And then they come up. And that's what happened to me on Sunday. And I wanted to share it with you to celebrate my own win, but to also have you think about this. And if you're living through this experience, know that it doesn't have to be. You can change that experience of being with your family. And especially, we're recording this in October. So the holidays are in front of us. So learning to manage your mind, undiet your mind, so you can have these type of experience with your family is totally possible. But that's not the topic of today's podcast. Today, we're going to answer a QA and a question that came in via, in this case, Instagram. And it's been a while since we did a Q&A. And the number of questions that I got after the last podcast on dieting your life triggered me to think maybe it's time that we start doing more Q&A frequently. 
So a listener sent me a question. The question is this one. Is it possible to accept your body, but still want to change it? I think this is a very frequent question that people entering the world of the non-diet approach are asking themselves. So I'm going to answer the question in a way where you're going to be able to find your best answer for you. But first, I want us to all ground into two basic principles. Number one, you have the power of choice, which means the answer to this question can be yes or no. And it's entirely up to you to decide how you're going to make this decision. That's one thing that undieting our life does is it give us back the power over our own body and what is right for us. And our role as me, the podcast host today, or me, your coach, is not to tell you what to do, but instead to guide you and help you find the confidence, the autonomy, and the agency to make the decision for yourself. If I was to coach you and tell you what to do, this is what I teach my professional student as diet culture coaching, where we make the decision for our people. And that is bad. And that is wrong. That's not true coaching. The coaching that you want to seek is a coaching of empowerment, where your coach help you and teach you how to make decisions that are best for you. The next grounding principle I want us to sit in is the concept of acceptance. And again, there's a lot of false belief that we have learned because we were socialized to diet culture and patriarchy. So in literature, when we look at the definition of body acceptance, it says accepting one's body regardless of not being completely satisfied with all aspects of it. Acceptance means respecting your body, taking care of your body, not because of the size of it or the condition that it's going to give you, but just because it's your body. Treating your body with respect, dressing your body with clothes that fits, having a healthy inner narrative the thoughts you think about your body. Acceptance means having compassion for you and your body and everything that you and your body together have been going through. Acceptance doesn't mean to be perfect. I want you to think about your body as your partner in life. And let's take this analogy and think about this for a minute. Think about how you're interacting with your partner in life or your children. Do they only deserve your respect, compassion, and love if they're perfect? If absolutely nothing is wrong with them and they fit the ideal picture of what a partner, a husband, a wife, a child should be as per what the movies are saying in the magazine and Instagram, is that the only way they can earn your acceptance. Would you only love them if they behave exactly as you wish they did? I hope your answer to these questions is an obvious hell no, right? I accept my partner, my children for who they are and they don't have to be perfect. Well, accepting your body is just like that. It's treating your body as if it was your best friend as if it was your partner in life. Diet culture has led us to a false belief that acceptance actually means giving up, right? Giving up on ourselves, giving up on our health, on our body, right? And there's nothing further from the truth. That's one of the main false belief we've acquired, we were socialized with by being exposed to diet culture our whole life. And we need to undiet this from our mind. We need to remove this false belief from our mind. 
and input, right? Program what the true definition of acceptance mean. And acceptance doesn't mean giving up. It doesn't mean you passively staying there put and doing nothing for yourself. No. Acceptance is the starting point to engage with your body from a place of love instead of fear and removing all the shame we feel about our body. Acceptance means eliminating the constant struggle and self-judgment of not being able to live up to the standards, the impossible standards that we have been socialized to think about ourselves. That's what it means to accept. So from the understanding of what true acceptance, body acceptance means, and from the place of you can make any decision for you that you want, I want to guide you into making a decision, the best decision for you. I'm going to coach you in the style of coaching that we do at Undiet Your Life, which is causal coaching and empowerment coaching, meaning that we get to the root of the issue. And then from there, we rebuild a process with you to make a decision. Yeah, it's complex. No, we don't have the answer for you. You have to find the answer for yourself. But guess what? We embrace complexity. Because diet culture, yet again, has taught us the opposite, right? Quick fixes. One answer for everyone. And we know where that led us. Undieting your life is embracing that there is not one answer for everyone. And no, it's not simple. It's complex. So from that space, we're going to embrace complexity and we're going to dive into how to answer, can I accept my body and still want to change it? Three questions I want you to ask yourself. One, get clear on why you desire to change your body. Are those desire rooted in love or fear? And then the last, are those desire true? So let's develop each one of those steps. Number one, get clear on why you desire to change your body. Right? Literally take a pen and a paper and write that question. Why do I want to change my body? And then write down all the thoughts and the belief that are in your mind that leads you to want to change your body. Get honest with yourself. Don't try to be politically correct. That's one thing I always have to do hard coaching around because people assign a value to their thoughts, meaning that they feel a certain level of worthiness because of the thought they think. The problem with that is when you're not completely honest with yourself, you create conflict in your mind. This is when we feel pulled in two different directions. We feel a sense of conflict when we are about to make a decision because we have this, like what I call a subconscious thought that runs underneath that we don't want to see because we think it's a bad thought. It's in politically correct thought. And then we have the thought at the top that we think, oh no, I accept my body. But in the background, it sounds like more, I hate my body. And that creates internal conflict, the battle in your mind, the should and shouldn't and the have to, and the frustration and the stuckness and the paralysis and the going nowhere. Thoughts are just a string of words. They have no moral value, but you have to accept that you're thinking them. So put them in paper, get honest with yourself. Here's why I want to change my body. Two, once you've done this exercise, by the way, we call that a thought download in the framework we teach you inside of Undiet Your Life. Two, when you look at these reasons, these thoughts, these beliefs, 
as to why you want to change your body, I want you to look at them. Are they from a place of love or are they from a place of fear? Look at them and literally grade them, love or fear. Example, I want to lose weight because if I don't, I'll get diabetes. That's a fear-based thought. I want to lose weight because I'll be in less pain, right? That's from a place of love. My partner is not attracted to me. That's why I want to change my body, fear. The kind of another way of thinking about this is I want to be more flexible because I'll be able to have more active sex, place of love. It's not about someone else. It's not about, oh my God, this is going to happen, fear. Here's a fundamental truth about anything you want to change in your life, your body included and anything else. You cannot hate yourself into change. And even when it comes to your health, you cannot hate yourself into health. When we operate from a place of fear, from a place of, quote, beating ourselves up into change, we create a shitload of stress in our mind, therefore in our body, and that has loads of consequence, right? We do know that stress is one of the co-founding factor in many chronic health condition. So we're actually making ourselves worse by trying to, quote, beat ourselves away from fear into behavior change. So that was step two, love or fear. And then step three, are those reason, these thoughts and these beliefs that lead you to want to change your body, are they actually true? And that's part of undieting our life. Yes, undieting our life is about our body image, it's about food, but it's also about all the false beliefs we have been taught around health, for an example, right? Because there's a lot of them, right? Now, this is where you'll need to do some research if you are not working with a coach or if you're not working with a non-diet professional or if you don't have access to someone who can guide you you will have to do your own research. And this is where it gets difficult because our friend Google is diet culture entrenched, right? So if you Google how to remove pain, you're likely going to fall into, you got to lose weight. Weight loss is the number one element that will help you reduce pain because it's an entire system, right? Diet culture is not just a weight loss, it's an entire system. Fat phobia drives most of the industry in our life, including Google. Google is a fat phobic search engine. So looking for answer with regards to our health, specifically on Google may not be the right point for you. So this is where you may want to look for if I have a podcast around this topic or other podcaster or blogger or health at every size book and go seek out the information that is not fat phobic that will help you make a decision around your health or be guided by someone, right? This is the power of having a tool like our program where you can literally jump in, ask a question to one of our coach and boof, get an answer within 24 hours. But not everyone wants to join. Not everyone has the capacity to join. So I'm going to try to guide you here on how to determine if the thoughts and the belief that drives the reason why you want to change your body is actually true or not. Then I'm going to take a few examples here. One of the most common reason people entering the world of the non-diet approach are holding on to the desire to change their body is pain, particularly joint pain. So I want you to think about it in a very black and white logical way. If weight or weight loss was the solution to eliminate joint pain, then all the people at a quote normal weight 
according to the false BMI, but let's go there. Normal weight people, according to the BMI, would not have pain, right? Because weight is the cause of pain. If they have a quote, normal weight, then they wouldn't have pain. Is that true? We know it's not because we have people in our life that are quote, normal weight and they're in pain. That's just another diet culture false belief that we've been socialized and we have internalized that leads us to want to change our body for something that may never work. It may not reduce the joint pain you're experiencing. Joint pain is complex. It's not one solution that's going to fix it. One thing that we do know about joint pain is a large proportion of people who have joint pain is because they're lacking strength in their joint, in the muscle around the joint, in the tendon around the joint. This is not my field of expertise, but we do know that. This is where you need to go get specific help, physical training with an expert to help you strengthen your joint. This is where thinking about movement, not because of weight loss, but movement about gaining strength in your joint would be extremely helpful, hell of a lot more than weight loss. Let's think about a different reason why people would still want to change their body. It's because they believe truthfully for them, that if they lose weight, they'll be more confident. So in their mind, they think that a smaller body is the trigger to feel more confident. So let's go with this logic. If smaller bodied women would automatically get confidence, then all the small body women would be confident. And the opposite would also be true, which means women in larger body should not be able to access confidence if confidence was rooted in the size of our body. Is that true? Hell no. I mean, statistic upon statistics show that a vast majority of women are dissatisfied with their body, irrelevant of their size. Take me. I have a large body and I'm confident as hell. So that reason, that thought or that belief to change our body, that it will make me more confident is a bunch of BS. Confidence is not created by the size of our body. Confidence is created by the way we think about our body, the way we think about ourselves. Confidence is an emotion. All of our emotion, including confidence, are created by our thought. We may temporarily have an external element, such as the size of your body, make you feel more confident, it's not going to be sustainable. It's not going to be permanent. It's a band-aid, a quick fix. What will deliver permanent confidence is changing the way you think about yourself and your body. That will create confidence. I could go on and on and on. There's a vast number of false beliefs that we need to unlearn. Here's another one. And I want to get it out there because I believe that is one of the other main proponent of thinking that if we change our body, life will get better, is that we think of ourselves as having only one body, our physical body. And that's, again, a gift of diet culture, right? We think as us as human as having only our body. The truth is we have four bodies. We have a physical body, right? Think of the bones and the tissues and the fat layer that you have on your body, your organs. That's one. But underneath that, we have a mental body, all the thoughts and all the mind stuff we're thinking. 
We have an emotional body, right? How we process the emotion in our body. These two bodies are pushing into the physical body. By that, I mean a lot of the things we see in our physical body are a outcome of what goes on in our mental and our emotional body. And we also have a spiritual body. Diet culture and wellness culture has a socialized that we are only a physical body and what we do with our physical body will create health and happiness and peaceful and confidence, ignoring everything that goes on into our mind and into our emotional body. And that doesn't work. I mean, if it did work, all of us girls here or they who you are would be happy healthy and peaceful. This podcast would not exist if that was true. So when you're looking at changing your body for quote health reason, you have to think beyond your physical body. What else is involved in this situation beyond your physical body? So let me recap those three things or question you need to ask yourself to answer the question for yourself. Get clear on why you desire to change your body. Are these desire thoughts and belief that lead you to want to change your body? Are they even true? And then the third is, are those thoughts, beliefs, and desire that lead you to want to change your body? Are they rooted in fear or love? I hope me guiding you through those three steps is helping you. And no, I didn't have the answer for this person on Instagram. I don't have the answer for you. I need you to find the answer for you of what is the best answer. Can you accept your body and still want to change it for you? If you want some help when answering that question for yourself, please come and join us inside of Undiet Your Life, the course. And I'll be right there, me and my team, to guide you with that question or any question that you may have about your body, your food, your life, anywhere where that culture may have infiltrated your life. With that in mind, I love you, my sister, and I'll see you on the next podcast. Beyond ready to shed diet culture from your life and become the expert at your own body? Awesome. Then you need to join on Diet Your Life program. Go to stephaniedozier.com forward slash join and join us now. On Diet Your Life is the first program of its kind with the unique combination of mindset, life coaching with intuitive eating and body image. Find your freedom, reclaim your power and take control of your time so you can refocus on what really matter to you. Join Undiet Your Life at stephaniedoze.com forward slash join, and I'll see you on the other side.